patients with aromatase inhibitor resistant, hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative advanced breast cancer results of the phase three Capitello 291 trial will be presented by Dr. Nick Turner. Nick. Thank you very much, um, Carlos. So it's a pleasure to present the prime results of Capitello 291 on behalf of my co-authors. So AKT activation is very frequent in hormone receptor positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancer through genetic alterations in the pathway, but also may occur in cancers without genetic alterations. AKT signaling is also implicated in the development of endocrine resistance. So Capivacert was developed as a potent and selective inhibitor of all three AKT isoforms. In a previous phase two study, the Faction trial, Capivacertib added to fulvestrin significantly increased PFS and OS, both overall with more pronounced benefit in those tumors that had pathway alterations. The Capitello 291 study recruited patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancer, all of whom had progressed on a prior aromatase inhibitor. Up to two prior lines of endocrine therapy and one prior line of chemotherapy were allowed for advanced breast cancer. Prior CDK4-6 inhibitors were allowed and at least 51% were required. And I highlight that also diabetics not requiring insulin were allowed. 708 patients were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to fulvestrant and capivacertib or fulvestrant and placebo with the randomization stratified by the presence of liver metastasis prior CDK4-6 inhibitor use and in region. And capivacertib was given four days on, three days off, a regimen selected early in clinical development to maximize the therapeutic window. There were two co-primary endpoints PFS by investigate assessment overall and in AKT pathway altered tumors, which we meant the presence of at least one qualifying mutation in PIK3CA, AKT1, or P10. Key secondary endpoints were overall survival and objective response rate. <clears throat> in terms of baseline and tumor characteristics and prior treatments, these were well balanced overall and in the AKT pathway altered tumors. 69% of patients had had a CDK4-6 inhibitor before for advanced breast cancer, and 18% had had a prior chemotherapy. <clears throat> so to show you the two co-primary endpoints, first of all, investigator assessed PFS overall. So overall, uh, median PFS on placebo and fulvestrant was 3.6 months, and this increased to 7.2 months on capivacertib and fulvestrant, and the adjusted hazard ratio here was 0.6. As you can see, the curves separate early and then stay separated for the duration of follow-up. And here, the second co-primary endpoint, investigator assessed PFS in the AKT pathway altered population. Here, median PFS was 3.1 months on placebo, and this improved to 7.3 months on capivacertib with an adjusted hazard ratio of 0.5. Again, highly statistically significant. I show you here an uh, exploratory analysis of investigator-assessed PFS in the non-altered population that per protocol included unknowns. Here, the hazard ratio was 0.7, and then excluding unknowns, um, the hazard ratio was 0.79 with very similar looking curves. I show you here the pre-specified subgroup analyses showing that Capivacertib had consistent benefit across all pre-specified subgroups. I highlight two, patients with and without liver metastases had similar benefit from Capivacertib, and also patients who had had prior CDK4-6 inhibitors or had not had prior CDK4-6 inhibitors had consistent benefit. <clears throat> this is a planned analysis of overall survival that was requested by the regulators at this time point to assess for no detriment. I highlight there was no planned analysis of superiority at this time point. And overall, the hazard ratio was 0.74 in an AKT pathway altered cancers, 0.69. In terms of adverse events, the most common adverse event was diarrhea that occurred in 72.4% of patients, 
The majority of this was grade one, although 9.3% of patients did have grade three diarrhea. There were two rash terms in the, um, over 10%, and in terms of a group term of rash, rash occurred in 38% of patients, 12.1% grade three. But I highlight both hyperglycemia and stomatitis were relatively uncommon, both having grade three events only in 2% of patients. And so to conclude, Capivacertum and Fulvestrant provided a statistically significant and clinically meaningful improvement in PFS overall and in AKT pathway altered tumors. The benefit of Capivacertum was consistent across all clinically relevant subgroups, including those patients who'd been previously treated with a CDK4-6 inhibitor and with liver metastases. Overall survival follow-up is ongoing for future planned analyses of overall survival, and the safety profile of Capivacertib was consistent with that previously reported with a relatively low discontinuation rate. And this combination of Capivacertib and Fulvestrin has the potential to be a future treatment options for this population of patients. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Nick. Um, so the, uh, can you tell us whether the majority of, of the PI3 kinase, IKT altered tumors were, have had pic 3 ca mutations? <coughs> and also, do you have a sense that this drug is, might be better tolerated at PI3, PI3 kinase alpha inhibitors? So um, the data was not in this slide deck, but it is in the deck we're presenting in the conference. So the majority of the pathway altered tumors were pic 3 ca although 5.2% had AKT1 mutations and 7.2% P10 alterations. Your mm. second question, Carlos, it's difficult, of course, to do cross-trial comparisons, yeah. and there are different CTCA versions in the different slides. But one prominent difference is there's substantially less hyperglycemia with Capivacertib, as well as less stomatitis and um, diarrhea. And certainly my personal experience is I've found it easier to give Capivacertib to to patients than PI3 kinase inhibitors. Thank you. Questions from the audience or in the webcast? What is the median time on treatment? You know, for Alpelisib is about six months. Yes, I don't have, we don't actually have that information yet, Carlos. It'll be very important for us to present that in the future. Okay. No questions? Yes, please. <laughs> You know, asked Royal MD Edge, um, is testing for AKT um, currently in the panels? It, 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 is is uh, AKT uh, currently tested for in, in panels, gen uh, genetic panels? In genetic yeah. panels, yeah. thank you. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I just couldn't hear <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah no, I wasn't. Word, yeah, that's, excuse sorry, me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, well, the, the vast majority of patients, when they're tested for mutations in their tumor tissue or liquid biopsies, have panel testing. Yeah. And AKT1 and P10 are in, I think, all standard panels as well as PIC3 CA. Yeah, good. Thank you. But in this study, you selected uh, P10 loss by immunohistochemistry, no, correct? In, it, no, this study was all genetic testing in the pathway. So testing was done on tissue the, with the Foundation 1 CDX assay. Oh, good. Okay. So that would capture all the relevant alterations. 